Hey, I see Anna, Eddie, thanks for joining. Dreamer. We've got to speak. And Ben Chenian. Jenny, can you try speaking just to make sure I can hear you? <laughs> ah, okay, all right, I gotta fix stuff on my side. Hold on. Okay, try again. Are you speaking on the space? Um, there we go. Checking. Yep, yeah, cool. All right, I got you. And Mika, can you try speaking on the space just to make sure you're good there? Yeah, hi. Hello, thanks for being here today as our guest. Appreciate having you on. Thank you, you so on. much. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to ask everybody uh, in the room if you all could please do me a huge favor and click the little bubble button on the bottom right, like, uh, repost the space, DM friends that you know usually come to the spaces and remind them that this is happening now. Um, I'm going to play our little uh, theme song for the space while we get more people in here, and then we'll go ahead and kick it off, okay? You're now in the place to be. It's the Web3 Artist Spotlight. Let's go. Web3 Artist Spotlight. Spotlight. Yeah. Pop and get to talking on the spotlight. spotlight. Web3 Artist Spotlight. We going live deep dive on a hot mic. Huh. Every single show we go deeper than the surface. Learn about the artist, their vision and their purpose. purpose. From all different backgrounds, embrace the Talk about the process and the work that makes it worth it. Yo, join the conversation, it's that time of the day. Time when we delve in the minds, find their creative way. Create yeah, web three artist spotlight, illuminate the stage. Illuminate. The canvas to the chain, from their minds to the page. Yeah. We learn about the artists from the stories that they breathe. From the unknown to the frame, all grown from the scene. Uh. NFTs change the game, artistry free on the blockchain canvas, authenticity's key. Different genres, different styles, yeah, it's all in the mix. A background so diverse, join the clip and get your fix. Get your quick, you want game, revealing tips and tricks. Come join us in the spotlight, you're on the guest list. You're on Every the list. we learn and listen when creatives make the call. Share about life and artwork, we talk about it all. Hosted by John Carlo and Jenny Stars, two unknowns. Join into the spotlight where the artists uh, show. Yeah. Web free artist spotlight, we get live and get to talking on the spotlight. Spotlight, spotlight, free artist spotlight. We going live, deep dive on a hot mic. Huh. Every single show we go deeper than the surface. Learn about the artist, their vision and their purpose. Heard from all different backgrounds, embrace the diverse race. Talk about the process and the work that makes it worth it. All right, thank you everybody for being here today. Happy Friday. How you doing, Jenny? How you doing, Mika? Doing great, happy to be here. Oh, thanks, thank you so much. I'm doing great, I hope you're doing well. So far, so good, so far, so good. I see some friendly faces in the room. Thank you guys all for being here today. Uh, I'd like to just start it off, first of all, just kind of doing a, an introduction for the space in case we have any new people here listening live or that may be listening later. Um, then I'll turn it over to Jenny to introduce our special guests that we're spotlighting today. And then at the end, we'd love to have other people come and join us up on stage. Uh, let us know how you're doing, vibe with us, ask a question, you know, just, uh, just to hang out. So definitely uh, look forward to that. If you guys want to request later on, please feel free to do so. So um, this is basically a space uh, that I started uh, because I really wanted to be able to, to spotlight and really um, highlight artists in the Web3 space. You know, I felt like we weren't really giving enough 
of a spotlight and a voice to people that are creatives in this particular space. And most of the spaces that I had seen before were just giving people a few minutes to come in and chill, but not really to allowing people to get to know the artists behind the art better, right? Like learning more about them, about their story, about their creative process, their inspirations, what they like to do outside of art. So um, we created this space where we can really go deeper, get to know a lot more about the artists, and hopefully in this process, um, allow people that maybe are already following the artists to get to know them better. Maybe we can uh, have them you know, get connected with new people. Uh, we could also maybe inspire people that might have a creative journey or creative passion of their own to start their own journey. And, and ultimately, we really want to celebrate how art and creativity bring us all together, that it's really a, a truly a universal language. Um, it's a very inclusive space, so we welcome artists of all nationalities, backgrounds, artistic styles, whether they're just starting out in their you know, Web3 journey, or maybe they might be already a seasoned professional with tens of thousands of followers and um, you know, lots of sales, right? We really want to have a diverse range of voices from the Web3 community and, uh, and really, yeah, just explore how, uh, how this technology is bringing us all together and revolutionizing the art world. So, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Jenny, to introduce our special guest for today. Thank you. Mika is an Iranian digital pencil and watercolor artist who is best known for her illustrative artwork. She also plays music and is a veterinarian. Mika's art is currently available on Foundation as well as Object. Her subjects range from whimsical digital pieces to more traditional digital. We are super excited to learn more about this emerging artist. And with that, Giancarlo and I welcome Mika to the space. Welcome, Mika. <laughs> oh, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Giancarlo and Jennifer. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so uh, first, you know, uh, it's amazing that you're here and I can see my, some of my friends, especially Eddie and Minas here. And uh, yeah. I am here. This, uh, if you uh, want to ask me uh, any question, sure, sure. and I can share my story. <laughs> and I don't know where, where, where um, uh, yeah. from which spot I have to start. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, and so the way we usually start it, that's perfect. Is uh, we maybe ask people to just take like five minutes and maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself. You know, who's Mika? A little bit maybe about your story, your upbringing, and. You can maybe conclude with like, how did you end up coming into the Web3 space? Okay, okay yeah, um, actually, uh, yeah, I'm Mika, I'm 27, and uh, it's about uh, one year that I graduated from a veterinarian university in Iran. And uh, since I was a kid, I started painting, and I was born in an artistic family. And, uh, but in different style, my mom, my dad, my dad sing near neck and beside of his work, his farmer, and he also sing. My mother paints and she's a painter and my, uh, my, I have only one brother. Uh, he do, you know, uh, he makes stops with a uh, wood and iron and also playing uh, musical instruments. And yeah, and um, my, but you know, my mother never uh, taught me anything about painting. I think it was something in my genetic that I am into arts. But unfortunately, uh, when I uh, um, when I was in the uh, high school, uh, my parents forced me to study uh, veterinarian medicine because they want uh, their daughter to be a doctor. Oh my God, you know, I cannot bear it at word because, you know, um, people after graduation uh, decide uh, they have expect they have expectation of me that okay you're a doctor you have to work in clinics but I do hate that and after graduation I followed up art again and I didn't know about NFTs but uh, my brother uh, told me about it three years ago and I didn't take it uh, you no know, seriously because uh, I thought that uh, I'm okay with my physical art and uh, it's about four months that I started uh, officially NFT. 
And uh, because my base friend, who uh, we are about 12 years friend, he insi she insists to join this world. Yeah, I'm now I'm here. Oh, that's awesome that you're here. <laughs> it's cool that your friend brought you in. And I was kind of surprised, actually, what you said, that coming from a family of people that were all very artistic, right, that they um, basically told you, like, no, you have to pursue a career in, like, medicine or veterinary medicine. Um, and... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you know, because I think it, the reason is that because uh, uh, in community and society that I live in, uh, they uh, do not care about art and uh, the best way to earning money is being wet. And nowadays, uh, when I tell to father foreigners that I'm a doctor of veterinary medicine, they thought that, oh my God, you're rich. Oh no, I'm not rich because I hope that. I do help to animals. I have I help animals free and treat them free, because I love animals. But I do hate to live in uh, uh, work in clinics because I cannot tolerate the atmosphere up there. Uh, beside of being a wet, uh, since I was five, I started uh, learning English, and after that, learning French and Chinese. So. Uh, you know, the main career that I have is painting and selling art and being a French teacher in the Language Institute. Here in Iran, uh, teachers do not have, uh, you know, high income, but I love my job as a teacher because I love to uh, teach French uh, to my students. And also after work, uh, I think about six hours a day, I work in institute, language institute, and my father expects expect me to uh, being in clinic and when whenever he called me oh Mika where are you are you at clinic oh uh, I, I have to uh, say lie yes I'm at clinic but honestly I'm at uh, you know language institute and uh, after that when I come home I do painting yeah no, that's great. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that like, it, it sucks because like educators are such an important profession, right? And yet in society, like in your society, even in ours, right? Like in, in the West, it is such an undervalued profession, you know? And, and so it's, it's always like really bugged me a lot that that's a, you know, unfortunate situation that, that we live in. But um, but that's cool that you're also you also teach so like French teacher, you do your painting, and it seems like those are things that you're you're a bit more like drawn and, and, and passionate about. And what I was curious too, I wanted to know is um, you know, like what inspires you to like create your art, right? And and what do you think has maybe influenced the style of art that you have? Uh I had many styles since I started painting and I didn't know which of them I like, watercolor, oil painting, realism, portrait, I didn't know, oh my god. But it's about, uh, I think, two or three years that uh, I found my way, I think, I think I, by passing time, the time I found my way. And, and, and if you check my object and also foundation, you can see most of them are character designing of faces and their realism of portraits. Because uh, since I was a kid, when I uh, look at others' eyes, adults, children, I thought that I can feel their feeling, I can feel their emotion. So uh, these things made me to, um, you know, paint portraits and also character designing. And, uh, you know, first, uh, about, I think, two years ago, I just uh, do a lot of physical art in realism. But now I want to show uh, each person character in their painting. I love to change them, but uh, just it's looks like to them not similar the exact and i chose people who has special things their face and uh, i mean i know of course all people are all special and uh, but many people in, in nft wars told me oh mika why you do character designing 
um, people do not care and do not want to buy pe other people's faces character. But I keep it going. And uh, I do hate abstract art, but I, I meant them. They were my physical art in past. I meant them in uh, object. And I do not do abstract art a lot nowadays. Uh, and uh, these styles just come, and I don't know. And if you uh, if you want, I don't know how to. Sh I, I have to tweet it or share it. How I have a lot of sketchbooks. You can see that I sketch a lot, a lot, a lot. And finally, I figure it out. I like this style, and I I'm comfortable with that. That first. Uh, paint the uh, sketch them with mechanical pencil on paper and uh, do uh, some watercolor uh, and after that work more on it uh, especially the color of the painting uh, in, in photoshop because uh, i i don't have uh ipad i have a surface pro and i have to do these stops with uh photoshop Love it. No, thanks for answering that and for giving us a little bit more um, information about the different styles and, and kind of what you know drew you to, to the portraits and other things like that. Uh, Jenny, you want to go to your question? Yeah, absolutely. So when I was going through your object, um, I noticed that you created several captivating and realistic pieces of eyes. What is it about eyes that appeals to you as an artist? Oh, my, uh, I think you're on mute, Mika. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, as uh, you know, uh, I um, I studied veterinary medicine. Uh, beside uh, the animals' anatomy, I studied a human's anatomy, and uh, um, each part of our body is special. But the just eyes um, can show their feelings. If, I mean that if I don't talk to you, if you care about me, I, uh, my mother, my father, I have my boyfriend, whoever, if someone care about you just by looking to your eyes can uh, see that what is your feeling. And the details of, you know, um, the color of each eyes, the lines, and they are special for me. And when I'm painting them, I really enjoy that. I love that. So yeah, I agree. I think that the eyes always reveal the truth. Um, and these are lovely. They're super detailed and realistic looking. Thank you so much. So Mika, um, you know, being a, a, a veterinarian, you know, and I was looking through your, your artwork in, in preparation for this, I kind of came into it expecting to see probably a lot of artworks about animals. And yet I was surprised that, you know, in going through it, I saw, you know, saw the eyes, I saw portraits, caricatures. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff related to animals. And yet I found this one piece in particular, which I thought was an absolutely lovely piece that you called um, Horse Universe, and it's in your Tezos Woman's Spirit collection. And I was very drawn to this particular piece. Actually, I, funny enough, I, I noticed Jenny actually pick, picked one of the editions of it up as well. I, I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about that particular piece and what it means to you. Uh, yeah, Je <laughs> yeah, Jennifer uh, collected one piece of that. that. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much. Uh, My pleasure. Um, it's, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, uh, as you told me, I have different kind of uh, painting in my uh, object, and um, I do not want, I do not like to stay in a frame. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came to NFT Wars, people told me, okay, when you have a collection, you have to put just one kind, for example, eyes, just just faces. But in this collection, you have see different side. It depends on my mood that I paint. This eye, it's uh, I have uh, one of my cousin's horse uh, because of, of, I don't have a professional uh, camera. But uh, with my uh, 
with my phone. Yeah, I take a photo, a lot of photo. And when I was uh, going to uh, horse riding, I decided to take took this photo. And after that, I just wanted to paint it by polychromous pencil. And uh, um, and many people told me, why? Why you just uh, paint just one eye? I say I don't know. I like that. I like just want to. I just want like to paint single eyes, and you know, it's dependent on my mood. Today, my mood is to do character designing. Tomorrow, maybe I want to do just one single eye realism in realism. And this universe, uh, I myself, it, it, before in a few words, uh, it, uh, I, it, it's especially physical, and I have it in my room. Uh, and I didn't uh, sell it because I love it. Because when I saw that, when I see that, I feel, oh my God, how incredible this creature is. This. And horses, especially in, in between animals and especially between humans, I think. Horses, horses are, you know, rational and they are strong and uh, their eyes are special. Yeah. I love that. And I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. No, no, no. Go ahead, Jenny. Go ahead. I was just going to say that I really appreciate that. I feel like um, it's important for creatives not to feel like they are boxed in. So I'm really glad that you sort of pushed against some of that advice that you got. Um, because, yeah, there isn't a particular necessity. And I feel like um, an artist's style is still going to sort of stay the same regardless of the different subject matters that they make, you're still going to have a certain level of cohesiveness. So I like that you just did what you wanted to do. Um, and I really uh, was taken by that horse I one. It really stuck out for me. Um, and I did want to touch on the other collection that you have. You have one on foundation. I noticed you only have one piece, but it's a very striking piece that you created. Um, in your collection, Humanity, you stated that at one point we were equal, but then we lost our way. Can you share with us what the child in your art you created for this collection symbolizes? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I don't. I, I um, when I when I was a kid, I, this start from that. When I was a kid. Um, um, my mom um, pushed me to do a lot of positive things and grow. And, um, you know, um, now I have, um, I have some problems in my mentality. I know all of us have. All of us, all of people in around the world have depression because of the situation. I know that. And I know it's back to, especially to our childhood. And uh, when I, when I uh, get, I got adult, I, I think a lot about children, especially in other countries that uh, people, uh, that children have, um, they government or whatever, uh, don't pay attention to them. And I thought, that, okay, I had a, perfect childhood but now i have mentality problem so what happened what will happen to them that they have the worst childhood what happened that when they get adult so uh i thought that yeah when something i don't know boom the, the universe uh created uh it was equality I think, and um, but now we always talk about equality. We think that we respect that, but uh, in actual word, we don't see that. Um, and uh, yeah, and because of that, I thought that it's uh, you know the kind of uh, children that are in um, countries that they don't have any facilities and they don't care about childhood. And uh, I thought that what happened to them, and that it, this is the one reason I I love child. I when I was a kid, I I was waiting to be a mother and have a lot of children, 
But now I do not love to have that one because, you know, I cannot care about, I cannot control um, her or his mind to have a um, good and great mentality in the future. So I, I have, I, I'm afraid from that. Yeah. Yeah. I think even um, parents who have children were always concerned about the state of the world and the things that are happening in this world. And you're right to feel genuinely concerned about the disparities between those who have and those who do not have in this world, because it's very obvious, you know, there are so many wealthy nations. And then at the same time, we have children who are quite literally starving to death or have no access to water. So I think um, your sentiment is really uh, beautiful and very profound. And I really think it's an important piece to create and a good message. Yeah, thank you. And you know, today uh, I, I don't, I'm not telling you that because you feel pity or something to me. I just want to say that, you know, I didn't have this situation. One of my friends notes that from here that um, when I came to NFT world, uh, people told me about uh, scammers or bad people. And I, I think, oh my God, they are, what are they talking? There is no cruel people in the world. Oh my God, how one person can do that? And I had that bad uh, you know, experiment last night, unfortunately. And uh, today I cried a lot about it and I was awful. Uh, I had awful feeling. And um, I, I didn't know how how people can do that to one another person when you can see for example me not me other people in this space they are they're fighting for their life okay some of them are rich some of them are poor some of them have a has a medium life okay whatever they are trying and why one person can be cruel and make them fool and yeah and it's about uh, it's like other things in you know for governments in other countries and I don't know oh my god I need to drink some water uh, it's so it's so unfortunate that it happened to you Mika and I, I did see that post you and so first of all thank you for sharing that that happened you know because I think sometimes I know people may feel like embarrassed or like feel like not maybe wanting to share like oh my god I got scammed by somebody like how could I be you know how could I let that happen but so I appreciate that you actually like shared it you mentioned like who it was and I think you know first yeah I <laughs> go ahead go sorry ahead. sorry I I'm so talkative sorry <laughs> and uh, it's First, I didn't want to share that because I want to make sure that he is ex ex mm -hmm. scammer. I just wait. I just wait. I just, okay, no, mail cuts. Okay, it's okay. And after he texts me that uh, you won't be the first one, oh, I got, I got that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I, and I know, like, I mean, there's been so many people that have been, you know, have been scammed in this space and. I think it's definitely still an area that you know needs to improve in terms of like the security and all that because it's it's you know it's still very vulnerable in terms of um, you know of, of security. But um, one thing I did want to point out, I, know I saw Eddie came up here as well while while you were speaking. I did notice that um, our friend here, Eddie, actually placed a bid on the your piece in um, in foundation. So um, that is awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. Oh, hi, Eddie. Thank you so much for being and thank you for always supporting me. He's a good friend because since I was started NFT, he he came. He, he, he was always nice. It doesn't matter if he collects or not. You know, it was sometimes he collects, it was sometimes he doesn't collect. So it doesn't matter. But he was always nice and he was always supportive, especially mental, in a mentality way. Hi, Mika. Hi, Giancarlo. Hi, hey, Jennifer. Eddie. Good morning. Hi, Eddie. There's this one piece that I picked up from Mika, and I want to share it up at the top and have her tell you the story about Bracky Girl, because it just made me fall in love with Mika, if you don't mind. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. 
awesome. So I love her characters. And Mika, could you tell the story behind Bracky Girl that I just pinned up at the top, please? Yeah, uh, actually, this Bracky Girl, uh, as I told you, it was uh, the one of uh, the you know the primary pieces that I minted an object. Uh, I uh, always tell that all of my uh, character designing are inspired by a real person. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know how to manage, you know, the designing, but uh, now I am planning to put the real one and the character also after, uh, you know, these days that people see that, uh, that this Bracky girl is one of my friends with the bracket and he, when she smiles, it's like me, big smile, all of her face can, you know, show that to you. And uh, yeah, and always, you know, she has problem with his, uh, her boyfriend and friends, but she's beautiful. I want to show that, that she is still beautiful with bracket and I call it bracket girl. And uh, yeah, that's all. This is a story about this bracket girl that I cracked her design. So, Giancarlo, I was confused at first what Bracky Girl was, and uh, because I'm <laughs> American, so I, I know them as braces. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. he told this story about Bracky Girl and about her having braces when she was younger, and it just melted my heart. And I love her characters. It's just, I seen she was being featured by you guys, and I was like, oh. I wonder if she's got any more characters. So I just started buying some of her more, more of her artwork on objects. And I'm like, wait a minute, she's got something on foundation. And she was in the middle of telling me she'd gotten a situation where she'd gotten a hold of a scammer. I was like, well, I was going to send you to eat to mint it so that we could have it on the blockchain because I love your artwork. So, it, and I seen what she added her Genesis piece for 0.03. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bid on that. And if nobody else bids on it, then I get her Genesis piece because I love collecting people's first artworks. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome, man. Thank you so much, Eddie, for for coming up and and, uh, and sharing that. And, and, and I appreciate what you do too, you know, supporting other artists, you know, in this space. You know, I think that's what we need more of in the community you know, as people that, that generally love art that are willing to, to learn people's stories and support them and you know, support their Genesis pieces. You know, I think sometimes people may be reluctant to buy something from somebody that hasn't sold anything, right? Cause you're taking a chance on that, on that person or that artist. So that is awesome. And thank you for, uh, for mentioning this other piece as well. And it's funny, I didn't know what it was and it's because in Spanish, like we did call them brackets. También. So it's like, it's, it's very similar to how uh, Mika was calling it, but uh, but then I was like, I, could, I guess I could see like somebody that wouldn't know that and be like, Bracky Brackets, what is that? So, but uh, thank you so much for coming up, Eddie. I appreciate that, man. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for hosting the space and uplifting Mika because I just love her personality. And like I mentioned to her in messages, I said, we need more kind souls like you in the community, and I want to make sure that you stay here with us. So much love to everybody in the space. I'll go ahead and turn my microphone off and let you guys continue. Love you so much. Thank you. Thank you for making my day. Yeah, and I actually enjoy the name that way. When you look at the piece, it, it feels better to call it Bracky Girl. Like it just gives it a different vibe. So I'm really happy you went with that. And Eddie, you're the best. Thank you so much uh, for coming up and uh, putting up that piece and uh, so that we could learn more about it and just everything you do for the community, brother. Um, I did have a question um, about your medium. So you create in charcoal, gauche, pencil, watercolor, digital, such an amazing range of mediums. Do you have a medium that you have never tried that you would be interested in creating with one day? Yes, uh, actually, I didn't uh, use oil painting. Uh, you know, I don't have any oil painting, and my mother's always uh, had paint a lot of oil painting, and uh, I love the smell of that. You know, I don't know what it's called. I love that smell, and uh, my mother also has an institute, art institute, and when I when I was little, I went there and. Uh, 
uh, I was between the her students. I smelled that liquid one and I loved it. I really love to try that, but I have to learn about it. Uh, but uh, nowadays I don't have enough time to learn. So one day I really love to try it. Oh man, that's going to be great. I could totally foresee that being a wonderful medium for you because it's so vibrant. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll be looking forward to that collection when it happens. Yeah, 100% for sure. And uh, Mika, one other thing I want to ask you about. So in your in your object collection, you know, I noticed that at the top of it, you mentioned that your artworks are usually first drawn by hand on paper and that then you go ahead and convert them to digital. And I was curious if you could maybe talk a little bit more about your process for like digitizing your work. Like how do you bring it into digital? What yeah. do you do that after? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, you know, I'm nice, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> about one year ago, uh, well, one year ago when uh, I, I figured out about digital painting that people have, you know, paint in on their computer or ipad oh my god how awful i didn't i didn't think it was it's not it's not valuable how is it possible and you know and finally i accept that by passing the time but um i'm not uh, comfortable with the start you know from starting uh, my painting to the end with uh, all of them being uh digital because of that because i want to fill paper and pen uh, and pen i uh, i i have also video on twitter that i uh, sketch uh by pencil and after that uh, uh, i decide the changing are perfect i take picture of the pen that uh, art and after uh, and some of them before digitalize it I uh, colorize it by watercolor just a bit, and after that, more work, work more on it uh, in uh, Photoshop. But some of them just uh, straight to um, Photoshop for colorize it. But uh, all of them at first day, I I have to because I cannot um, fill my painting without the real pencil. So I have to do that first and after that, digitalize it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. It's funny because I, I grew up doing, you know, physical art as well. And there was always just something about like, I don't know, just like, yeah, like feeling either the paint and seeing it and the, the texture and that then like trying to move to like a digital medium felt feel, like I feel very foreign at first, you know, or kind of strange, you know, but I've somehow now learned to, to love it and like embrace it. It actually, I enjoy aspects of it now of things that you can do in it that you can't like obviously like undo buttons or layers, you know, things like that. But, but I can, I can relate because yeah, it's, it just, it doesn't feel the same way. Like that when you actually like create something on paper or a canvas or something like that, but no, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing more about your, about your process. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I uh... I do agree with you because since I was a kid, I see that my mom always painting and has a gallery and I just see physical art. And uh, my mom, and until now, cannot accept my digital art. You know, so, oh my God, it's not possible. I don't know, the traditional one. And uh, yeah, and that's all. And if you want to ask more questions, I'm here to talk more. I have another question. Yes. Um, I noticed in your bio, you mentioned you play music. Uh, which instrument do you play? Oh, yeah, I can play for you too. But I, t I think it would be annoying. I don't know what a cause is like. It's like traditional in the musical instrument. Uh, since I was seven, I, play, I started play DAF. If you Google it, D-A-F. Uh, and it's uh, it's a circle one, a big circle, and uh, with a lot of chain uh, at the corner. Uh, 
and I play it and I sing and uh, play that that and I love my father hates that too uh, to uh, to play music uh, instrument music instrumental uh, in a uh, street because oh my god you're not poor why you do that I said I love to earn money from my music instrument in the street whoa what, what's the wrong i think it's because of the culture he n- cannot accept it but uh i, I love i don't know you know hafez hafez uh, it's a uh, um uh, it's a famous uh poet in our country and uh, i when i go to shiraz i always i always play daft there and sing and uh, people give me money and after that i go to bookstore and buy book and buy coffee for myself and i love that i love that for you (laughs) that's so fun that's so so cool well if you if you ever are inclined to play for us we are happy to hear you i would love to hear that i mean and i I don't think i've ever heard that instrument before either or maybe i have but didn't know so i don't know if you have it if you have one handy and you could but if not it's it's okay but i I would love that oh wait you're on mute uh mika Oh, what happened? Is it just me or I can't hear? No, it's okay. 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 No, it's okay. okay. I was like, what's going on? What's going on? Okay. Whenever you tell me to bring my instrument, I can go and bring and sing and play for you. Sweet. Or maybe, well, maybe we can so. save it. Let's save it for a little bit later. <laughs> Uh, we'll get this yeah, okay, we'll I, we can do it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll okay, back. okay. I just, I just okay. want to hear it, man. I'll, I'll, I'll be really stoked to hear that. Sounds so awesome. All right. Um, well, one other thing I wanted to ask you about as well was, you know, what else are you passionate about outside of art, animals, and music? Any other, like, hobbies or things you like doing? Um, um Actually... I really love to, um, you know, uh, when I was a kid, now I do that, but when I was, al- when I'm alone, I really uh, like to um, be a um, journalist, talk to people and, uh, you know, because I love to change my voice and be a journalist. And this is one of my passion that I have never do that because of, situation or whatever and um the side of uh, art and animals i also love to sing watch movies read books and uh, yeah and um i hate exercising but i do it <laughs> because one uh, because uh, because because uh, we have we have uh, in Iran we have something like we call it concours. It's an exam for entering university. Before uh, concours, uh, I was ten, and when I started uh, studying for concours, uh, I uh, my weight changed from sixty two kilogram to one hundred eighteen kilogram, and after that. Uh, I tried, I exercise a lot with a lot of diets. Uh, I lose weight and now I'm 68 again. Uh, but um, I hate exercising, but I have to because it's something in my genetics. If I do not do that, I, I, I you know, uh, I get fat. And yeah, so that's just that. I feel you. I feel you, girl. I literally exercise <laughs> just so I can eat because I like to eat. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I love chocolate. I'm addicted to that. You know, to my students, at uh, the first session of my classes, I told my students, okay, your teacher is so pretty and beautiful and you have to love her. And uh, she loves uh, books and chocolate. If you want to make me happy, you can bring books and chocolates to me. <laughs> I love it. I'm oh, also a huge fan of well of eating, just like Jenny mentioned as well. That's why I probably work out like extra hard so I can burn off the calories. But I'm also a huge uh, fan of chocolate, and I've done a few things where you can like buy um, chocolate, where like like these things were like memberships, and then like every month you get like a little pack, 
with like chocolates from different parts of the world. And so you'll get some with like green tea mixed in or like spices and, you know, cinnamon. Like, so it's, it's really cool. You can try like a bunch of different stuff. They might not have yeah, it where, you, where exactly. you're at, but it's, oh my God, I love it. I love to try like new chocolate flavors. I'm, I'm all for that. <laughs> That's so cool. And so you did mention also, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so I was just, I said, yeah, I do agree with you for eating chocolate and I love lint, you know, mm -hmm. the circle one, mm -hmm. smooth, they're smooth yeah. and I like milk chocolate. Yeah. So yeah, go on uh, <laughs> to ask another question. Yeah, well, you did mention that and, and that you also really enjoyed movies. I'm a huge you know, movie buff as well. I was curious if I asked you, like, what for you would be like the, your top three favorite movies of all time? Okay, so, oh, you cannot believe that. I know, I know, I know most of the people are here. Oh, my God, they are bullshit. Uh, but, but, you know, I believe in uh, transferring, traveling in time. I, I love these kind of movies because, you know, I have, uh, I have, um, I don't, I, we cannot nightmare. Nightmare has negative things. The stories that we can, I don't know the, the exact word for that. Uh, when we sleep, we have nightmare. Uh, I uh, I always see that I go to past that I can see my mom and my father that they are not getting married yet, and I I said Amika and I can feel that in dream that I I I'm traveling to time through the times, and my mother doesn't didn't recognize me, and also I bring my phone to take photo. And uh, it doesn't work because in that time, phone doesn't work. And I have a lot of these war, uh, dreams, dreams. These are not uh, dreams. Yeah, it's dreams, Dream. not nightmare. <laughs> dreams. Yeah. And these are, I know the details. And because of that, most of the time I go to past, but sometimes I go to future. And because of that, I believe in traveling in times and I love Inception, oh. dark series, and I love these kind of movies that they are traveling in through the times. But beside that, I love romantic uh, movies and books that made me cry. I don't know what I want to suffer myself, but uh, I think because <laughs> some, I don't know, I want to cry for that. And especially, uh, based on the true stories of um, movies like uh, Chernobyl, Leon or Lion, it's an Indian movie mm -hmm. based on the true stories. And yeah, these are, I, I cannot remember the name. I, when you show me the list, I can choose, but uh, I, I cannot remember the exact name that they tell you the top three. You know, it's funny when you were talking, well, first of all, yeah, Inception, I, I also love movies with like time travel and where they, you know, you know change timelines and things like that. Inception is also like one of my favorite movies as well. But what's funny is when you were trying to talk about time travel, I immediately was thinking about our friend Sarkis because he's uh, you know, an artist, always yeah. talking about like, like time travel. And actually, he has a whole collection around the time travelers. And then all of a sudden I see he requested to like come up to speak. And I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. But no, I, I love that. Um, oh yeah, my God, I, guys, come up and ask me question. I love yeah, yeah. question and I love to talk. <laughs> We're gonna get some of the people up here as well. But I think Eddie had something to say, go ahead. So I just DM'd you make a um, Project Almanac is another time travel movie and so is Safety Not Guaranteed. Oh, Safety Not Guaranteed is so good. That is such a good, it's on Netflix. Thank you. It's so good. Yeah, the the song that he plays by the campfire, I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool. Freaking love that movie. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, but yeah, it's so good for sure. Aubrey Plaza. And I thank you. The thank you. In that one, but yeah, it's it's good. All right. I want We're to go. To, it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Eddie. It's Oh, I was just going to say that safety not guaranteed. It's time travel and a romantic movie, Mika. There you go. I got mm. both of them for you. Yay. It's a perfect choice. 
All right, so I wanted to go to some of the people that uh, came up to speak. I think the first person I had on the list was Jossie4PF. How you doing? Happy Friday. Hopefully you're still there. All right, maybe he's having issues. All right, maybe we'll go to Lammy, Lammy B. Yeah, uh, Jim, Jim. GMGF. GIF, happy Friday. I'm so happy to be up here. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. What's good, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so late here, but I don't know what you guys are here talking about. You know, just city space and enjoying. Well, welcome. We're spotlighting uh, an artist, a fabulous artist, Mika. So if you have a question or a comment for her, we'd be happy to hear it. Oh, oh it's just about the arts. Oh, I don't have a question, but the only question I always ask, I always ask is, I don't know, maybe it is only me, only me that always feel like that. Whenever I see any arts, you know, whenever I see any arts, I always want to know story behind this like maybe was the story behind this art was the story behind this art i don't know is there any artist here that always feel like that too yeah i think we all we definitely want to know the story behind it so a little earlier on we actually covered that um but yeah so we're uh we're happy you're here and uh we're gonna take some more questions um for mika and you're welcome to listen in and if you have another question you just let us know I see my brother Sarkis on the stage. Welcome, Sarkis. Hey, time travel. The time traveler is here. He's arrived. Hey guys, uh, I was I was summoned by the words "time traveler," and <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I heard it, I was like, "Well, I guess they're calling my name." Um, yeah, it's so nice to be here. So nice to hear about Mika's work, and uh, I wasn't able to listen the whole time, but. Um, I've been looking through the work and when I heard that you're interested in time travel and that you have, uh, dreams of time travel, I find that very fascinating. Um, I time travel, you know, so, um, and dreams are, you know, they're portals to different dimensions. So you know, different frequencies. So it's really interesting. I'd love to talk to you in like maybe one-on-one -on -one on about that stuff too at some point. Um, love your artwork. Uh, I think it's really beautiful, really um, organic. And um, I, I, for me, organic, when it comes to art, organic is like a number one. Uh, it has to feel natural so you've you have that which is fantastic it's in your dna as well which is great you know you said your parents were um artists you know my parents are artists of their own um craft as well and um yeah i just i really do think that oil is going to be great for you um for, as the next uh, medium that you, you're working on and um, I wouldn't stress too much about learning it. I would just do it and learn it while you're doing it. Um, you know, that would be the best approach, in my opinion. Uh, that kind of just kind of removes the the barrier to entry or or like kind of the resistance to to start doing it because I feel like I kind of had the same issue. At first, I was like, you know, oil painting. I gotta, I gotta kind of like learn that. I have to have space for that. I have to have the right ventilation for it. I, I was just kind of complicating it for myself, and um, I just kind of started doing it and loved it. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for your comments, and we'll, maybe one day we can have uh, time traveling together as they mentioned that you're a time traveler and uh yeah yeah you're right i have to, to uh go through it and learn it thank you for right. sure i love that advice yeah and i think it's it's true you know i think sometimes and this is something that i've been guilty of in the past is like 
always feeling like conditions had to be perfect or, or I had to like learn all this stuff or be ready, be super prepared. And honestly, like sometimes it's better to just like jump right in and experiment and figure it out as you go. So I, I really love that advice, Sarkis. And yeah, I think you should totally go for it, Mika. I think, I mean, and you have the artistic, you know, the, the talent already, you know, you're super talented already. And I think you could just, you know, just, just get into it and play around, experiment, have fun, you know, and, and, and just try it. So yeah, I love that. Thank you, Sarkis, for, for coming up. We, we summoned you, you know, <laughs> the time travel. I love that. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, for coming here, man. And uh, I see we got JJ uh, up on the stage. Uh, JJ is somebody I've been, I've been actually DMing a lot with lately, you know, just connecting, talking about a bunch of different topics. Uh, so I'm really happy to see you here, man. How you doing? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thanks for uh, having me here. It's been an awesome conversation so far. Also a fellow time traveler, Sarkis. Love to see you, brother. Um, you know, Back to the Future 2, we're talking about movies is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. So <laughs> it's a little less, a little less on the darker side, but uh, it's influenced my life to be sure. Um, and even my writing and stuff. But really what I had to uh, come up and say, Mika, and I hope that we can figure out a way because it was just this serendipity is what drives me. Um, my book actually that I wrote last year is my first book. It's called Serendipity According to Francis. And it's a homage to my dog uh, that I lost last year. But um, what really where the rubber hits the road is you being um, – a veterinarian. I mean, that's just incredible because um, I, one of the other things that I do uh, consistently is help with a nonprofit for my girlfriend. We have a nonprofit called Silver Stray. And right now it's primarily focused in Gary, Indiana, which um, <clears throat> not everybody knows about Gary, but Gary is um, a very neglected um, city in Northwest Indiana, right outside of Chicago. And um, the nonprofit's mission and what we do, we actually have a clinic tomorrow, um, is we provide free microchips, uh, spay and neuter, rabies vaccines, distemper vaccines, dog food, cat food, whatever it might be. And um, one of the things that, you know, I mean, we've been doing this since March and we've already probably given out about $50,000 worth of in-kind donations and um, and services. And we have a our veterinarian she is, uh, she drives about an hour just to donate her time. And she's one of the only, um, not only is she a, a woman veterinarian, which is again, in a, there's a lot of male dominance, even in, in that, um, in that occupation, but she's also the only black, um, woman veterinarian in Northwest Indiana. And Gary is basically predominantly black and Brown. Um, I think it's like 87% total. And, um, so anyway, it's just really great for like the, the kids and the, and the people that we're serving in the community. All that said, uh, where I would, why I wanted to make sure and take this moment to try and reach out to you is, um, I've been trying to figure out a way to bring silver stray into NFTs. Uh, I've got some of my own art that I've already created as lead, you know, art for potentially help basically helping raise money for the foundation because that's one of the places we struggle. We're we're able to get the the microchips and the dog food and and the vaccines and the and the vets, but it's like some of the operational costs that we have we can't cover and we're just really bootstrapping. So I'm wanting to do a um you know an NFT project that really it focuses on the animals. And I don't know if you've done animals, so that's where I guess part of my question comes from, number one. And then number two, hopefully you might consider joining, um, you know, with all of the serendipitous overlap, you might consider joining this this project that I'm thinking about uh, drumming up here in the NFT space uh, around basically a shared love of animals <laughs> across the board. I think animals bring us all together. So sorry to go on so long there, but I just wanted to give an explanation and love your work and hope you might consider that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comments. And yeah, I, I am so glad that you care about animals and you are doing some stuff about animals. Yeah, I have, uh, you know, painting uh, uh, about animals too, that I minted them. But um, most of my art, 
um, about animals or physical that I sold them before and I don't have any picture of them. Uh, but nowadays I'm thinking about it and it's an uh, honor for me to joining uh, you know, the project that you're doing. I love that. That's so great. Well, well I'll definitely, um, let me see, because this always happens with me uh, on these Twitter spaces. I want to try and DM somebody and it won't let me. So <clears throat> if you could DM me, uh, that would be fantastic. So that way we can stay in touch because I think uh, it would be just great to have you as as part of this potential vision going forward. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you, JJ. Sure. Actually, sure. We should probably chat a little bit on the on the animal thing too, because I do know like several artists that are really good. You know, that really um, love animals. Also, have done some smaller collections to like support animal related causes. Um, so I could already you know help make some connections there. I think that'd be good. I love that for a, for a collab. And funny enough, my um, uh, well, my wife's uh, sister and brother-in-law are both veterinarians as well, and had at one point on like three or four practices as well. So, um, you know, that, that, there could be maybe something cool there to, in terms of partnership and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, let's let's definitely chat up on that. I, I'd love to to help you out with your uh, with your cause. Fantastic! Thank you so much, and thanks again, Mika. We'll be in touch. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. I saw uh, my buddy Gambler's up on the stage had his hand up. How you doing, brother? Happy Friday. I'm good. I'm good, Mr. John. Thank you for having me. Miss Jen, thank you for having me. Shout out to everybody on stage. Shout out to Miss Mika for being here with us today. I love Twitter spaces, man. Look at the magic of Twitter spaces. Y'all collabing up here. Thanks to John and Jen bringing us all together, making magic happen, uh, making a difference in the world. I love to see it. I do have a quick question. I've, I've really been enjoying the conversation. Um, something stuck out to me that you said earlier, Mika, and it really struck a chord in a positive way. Uh, when you were discussing or sharing how you still uh, go out and, and uh, create art in public and that you enjoy doing that and it's just something you do naturally. And, and, and that just sounded so pure when I heard you say it. Um, I'm from the Bay Area, so I'm used to uh, a lot of people, whether it be street performers or artists, uh, just creative individuals being out in public and sharing their art with the world. And I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I wanted to ask you, like, what advice would you have for artists out there uh, who maybe, you know, have never done something like that, gone out in public and just created art for the world? Uh, what advice would you have for people who maybe have never done that, but uh, could possibly benefit from going out and just experiencing that pure form of creation? Because I do think there's a lot of value uh, and wholesomeness in that. And I think it just really represents the passion that you have as an artist. And if you could speak to that, I think I think I'd really, you know, many of us may, may gain some value from it. Uh, hi, Gumbler. Uh, yeah, you know, um, um, you know, I think it depends on the person. We have, uh, you know, extrovert, extrovert and introvert uh, person. So um, I'm extrovert. I, I always like that. I was always and now I'm like that. Uh, but, you know, um, art is beautiful. And um, I think we have to show this beauty to world, to people, uh, and you know, each steps, each first steps are hard. For me, yes, it was hard, especially uh, in the situation that I am living in, that the, the, the society, 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 yeah, uh, society cannot accept that, it was hard, but uh, after a while, it was normal for me, and I I, I see that people are enjoying to see that. I didn't have experience about painting in public, but just music. Um, I think I just want to, sh whenever I was sad, happy, whatever in me, I want to show that in my music and show it to public. And uh, I think uh, you, you and other people, I don't know you, uh, I don't know whatever, whoever, uh, 
you have to leave your comfort zone. Each step, each change has their challenge, has their uh, fear, but uh, go for it. As uh, Circus told me, you have to go for oil painting and do not do, do it, anything do else. <laughs> I love it. And so I guess it's like you have your hand up. Did you want to comment on something on that, on that question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I definitely have something to add to that. And um, thank you, uh, Mika, for for saying what you said. And, and, and Gambler, thank you for asking that question because I didn't hear Mika talk about that. I wasn't here for it. Um, I've been I've been painting and drawing everywhere, um, like literally everywhere I go, I have paper in my pocket or a sketchbook or i even you know a couple of times carried like big roll of canvas and just rolled it out in the middle of the park and just started painting um the way i see it is it's it's who i am and it's what i want to do right and it doesn't matter if i'm in a studio or if i'm outdoors or if i'm hanging out with my friends i can still be present and paint and draw and you know if i'm on the train instead of scrolling through my phone i would much rather draw um i'm not really as much worried about other people see seeing it i'm just being myself and showing up as myself everywhere and there's something to say about that and and something to learn from that and and something special that comes from that um when when i do that i've i receive a lot of love from people around me uh inevitably so even if it's a small drawing uh that only a couple people can see that are sitting next to me on the train they often are watching the whole time and then sometimes they even start recording and then at the end of it they will they will be like thank you so much. Like that was amazing. Um, and then they will ask me for my information. It's just a great way to meet people, uh, without having to approach people and have people approach you. Uh, so even if you're an introvert, uh, I think it's the best approach because introverts often are not like, you know, we're not so afraid to talk to people. We're just, we just don't want to approach people. Right. And, um, so it's, it's worked really well for me. So I just wanted to share that if it helps anybody here, I bet it will, um, you know, I can bet money on it, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to share my experience. Sarkis, Mika, shout out to y'all. Really appreciate the, the honest, uh, authentic answers. Um, I, I, I love hearing the responses and I, I think I'm sure many people gain value from that. So thank you for that. And thank you for the time, John and Jen. Thank you, Gambler. Thanks for being here. Happy Friday, my friend. Sorry, Jenny, you were going to say something? Uh, oh, no, I was just saying thank you to Gambler. It's nice to hear your voice, friend. Yeah, I always, always hear your voice, brother. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I really like the, those answers and, and um, particularly what Sarkos was mentioning, because I feel like you're right, even if somebody is like introverted, it's just a good way to help kind of break the ice, which is that, that first, that first part of like breaking the ice and making the connection, you already, you have something there that somebody can like ask you about or comment on uh, versus you having to kind of like approach somebody and be like, you know, Hey, or, or try to try to say something. So I think that is, uh, that is great advice. And I also, I mean, I, I've always, I've loved watching like Sarkis has, I just want to you know plug this in there as well, that Sarkis has a lot of videos of him, you know, kind of painting live. And when we had him as a, as a spotlight artist here, he did like a live painting for us as well. Uh, may have to try and find it and, and pin it up here. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's so cool. It's so awesome to, to see him create. He creates so fast and it's intuitive and it's, it's the coolest thing. So I just wanted to mention that as well, brother. Thanks so much, bro. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, just, you know, it's, it's, I think people really connect when they see the process and when they know what it takes, like what kind of energy, like how you look as you're creating. Just imagine like, 
you know, when you, when you're watching an artist, um, like a singer perform on stage or, or anybody, uh, perform live, there's just a much deeper connection because you're, you're there for the process and, and people, people want to be a part of that process. They want to be present for it and, and they connect with it. So it's a big unlock for me. Um, it's, it's been, it's been a, a very like amazing ride so far. And, and I, I only see it going, uh, further, um, the more I share my, my process. Cause I think it's important to, to know that, you know, a lot of artists are, are not willing to share their process and, uh, out of, out of some sort of fear, uh, of like someone copying their process or something like that. And I understand that fear. I, I've, I've overcome that fear. I've been there. I've had that fear in the past and, and, and worried if someone was going to see me do something and just like copy me, but it doesn't work that way. People can't copy your touch. People can't copy your vision. People can't copy the sauce. You know, everyone has their own sauce and, um, you know, no matter what someone will do, it won't be the same as yours. Um, it won't feel the same. It won't be organic. Like I said earlier. Yeah, it won't have that soul, you know, that that energy that you can uh, that you can give it. So I love that. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks for for coming up and and also helping uh, to answer that question. Appreciate you, man. And uh, I see we have uh, Diva as well on on the space. Uh, how are you? It was, it was so nice hearing from you yesterday on Collectors Corner. Thanks for being here on this space today. How are you? Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, I uh, I am just so happy to hear you all again. And thank you for yesterday's space. It was just amazing and so informative, as you mentioned it. But uh, I'm here now because um, I just loved because a vibe and um, her work i was following her uh, for a while now but i i think we are, we were following each other but i didn't know how <laughs> energetic and how um oh my oh my god i just loved her personality so much and i just wanted to say that to her and uh, say big shout out to you sister i just am so proud of you and uh, as an Iranian and as a woman and as an artist and everything, as a human being. And I wanted to uh, just say uh, that uh, to all of you that are here in the room, the uh, instrument that Mika is talking about uh, is a very, very, a very not from this world instrument, the uh, DAF. And it's something so special that I really uh, suggest you to hear it and uh, don't miss this uh, opportunity because it is something else. It's so different from all the uh, musical instruments that you might have heard in all of your lives. So um, please, Mika, uh, sing and play for us uh, in this room. And uh, I personally don't want to miss that because I know that that, that music is coming from a very lovely soul. So um, I was to <laughs> I wanted to mention these two points and another one about. <laughs> sorry for being so talkative, no, but okay, I have okay. to say them because <laughs> I have to say them because I might forget them. <laughs> But uh, yes, the third one was about the oil painting thing. I just wanted to mention that uh, I think uh, the, uh, I don't want to call it fear, but the uh, uh, reluctance that Mika might feel uh, for uh, starting this process of oil painting might come from the background that she's talking about. When she has seen her mother uh, teaching and working the, uh, on this media for her uh, all of her life, it can, you know, lock something in your mind that uh, you have to be as perfect or you have to be uh, like that. And um, it, you know, the meaning of oil painting always has been. Uh, uh, 
summarized in in uh, your mother's work but i wanted to suggest you that start uh, doing it a la prima and start doing it without any uh, overthinking and just do it so instantly and uh, it, it will help you a lot because you are a very creative person and a very imaginative person. And I know that it would work for you a lot. That's it for me. <laughs> Sorry for being too uh, long. Don't apologize. You're great. And that was wonderful. Thank you, Diva. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Diva. I will do that. Love you so much. Yeah, I know you for a while. And thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, Diva. And by the way, after you mentioned that, now I'm like, I'll be like, Mika, like, we got to go get that instrument. We got to hear you play. We got to make it happen for sure. I did, I did want to mention uh, that three tweets, um, mm -hmm. if you scroll towards the right, uh, is a link for Mika's book ah, that yes. is on um, because she did uh, make a book. So check that out and it's on the Arabian horses. Yeah, I don't know, if, if they, oh, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. yeah, uh, yeah uh, during uh, the time that I was studying veterinary medicine, um, I wrote that book, and um, before that I invited by German uh, International Congress to speak, and after I decided, uh, after a month, they sent me an email that really, I, we really enjoyed your article and we want you to um, tell more about it and the make, um, we want to make a book from that free without any payment. So I started uh, writing that and they published it free. Uh, I don't, get, but, but the rule was that uh, you don't get any uh, money from selling. You just can have, uh, you know, some percent of uh, that um, for, from selling to buy books from Amazon. Uh, but I love that. I love to share that to people that I um, did that because it's, something that uh, I, I think it was 2015 that I did it. Um, and it was about Arabian horse and some structures about uh, how to treat and how to um, care about horses. Uh, I wrote about Arabian horse because uh, they are special in Iran. And uh, when I was born, my father uh, gave a horse as a gift to my mom, and uh, we called it Aladdin. And uh, he passed away, but I loved him. And yeah, that's all. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's amazing. Congrats on like you know having published that book. I mean, that's that is that is so cool. And you, I don't know how long it might take you to, to get your instrument. Do you think uh, you could run over and, and pick it up? Or? Okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's in, in the next room. Uh, just one second. Sure, sure. Go ahead. And maybe in the meantime, I know I'll, I'll just go to the next uh, person that was uh, had requested to speak. I think it was if if Yade. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm probably butchering it right now. But uh, I don't know if you're still there and can speak. All right, maybe not. I saw we also had someone, um, Memo Day. Oh, all right, you're back. Okay. Okay, I don't know what is the sounds like by microphone of headphone. So maybe I have to put my phone uh, order and just listen it's it's bad or not i mean i hear it i hear it it's yeah can we get yes it's up? all right can yes yep. cool, cool. okay so uh, this is yeah 
and I'm going to play and sing for you. Sorry about my sound. Yes, yeah. Okay. Aunque tengo un play, no estaba ahí, ¿eh? ah, bueno. That was amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, sorry. The, oh, about the, sorry, sound, the, the, the sound of the, the instrument, because the I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to hear that. I think when the speaker is on, I can, I can hear my voice. Yeah. And yeah, sorry for that. And uh, I just. You know, it's better to be here and hear that uh, in live, but, uh, you know, by the phone and some technology, it's not okay. No, it came across. It was powerful. It was good. I was vibing. I think the whole room is elevated yeah, right now. That was the vibes are higher, man. I, and like your voice, your voice is beautiful. I mean, I love I, the singing and, and, I mean the the instrument is so cool because it's got like this kind of like drum, but then the the rhythm. I mean, it's I was yeah, I was vibing for sure. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, um, I did want to go to our the next person we have, but I don't know if they're still there. Uh, Memo Day, are you there? Are you there? Yo, yo, I'm here. Happy when Friday. you called the first time, I was I'm kind of busy. Yeah, same year. Am I audible? Yeah, you're yeah, on. we can hear you. Yeah, yeah you're on. Okay. Um, obviously, I um, I just want to say I'm so happy being on this space, and I'm so glad. You know, um, what's happening in Web3 now? Like artists coming up showcasing yourself not only in the museum or the showcase but coming up in the space and selling their art for a digital making the art digital i'm so happy that's all i have to say now i agree thank you so much for i agree that. thank you so much for, for coming up oh. yeah I don't know if it was just me or, okay, I was here. Okay, okay, yeah, there's a delay. Yeah, there's a delay. Well, in any case, thank you so much. Well, in any case, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for coming out here. Yeah. All right, I think the next person I have. Uh, I think the next person I can you go on? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, next person I had was uh, Cloudad. Okay. Good, e good evening, GM, GM. GM, GM. Hi, guys, GM. Doing well, brother. How are you doing? Um, I'm good. So uh, I've always been 
interested by the art since I was a little kid. And one thing that has really struck me since then was how underappreciated some artists have gone in the past. That it's now that we are just seeing them and appreciating their work. So I'm really glad that we are in a we are in a time that the future, the technology of the future, which is Web3, can be of use to upcoming artists. And I'm really glad an artist like Mika can showcase her work on Web3. So um, I'm really, really happy about that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clodet, for your comments. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, and that's a part of why, you know, why, why we do the spaces, you know, um, or maybe in case anybody wasn't here at the beginning, like, I just feel like, you know, artists in general, a lot of times have been very, you know, undervalued. And I think even in this broader space of Web3, a lot of emphasis is still placed on these larger, you know, collections, PFP projects and things like that. And yet there's a vast amount of like super talented artists that are in space creating like amazing artwork, you know, and some of them were like so talented, like Mika, like music, but that do music and they can paint and they draw and they can create digital art. I mean, like the amount of talent and amazing artwork that we have out there. I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. And it just doesn't get enough attention in this space. So I think that's one of the things that, that I, I love is, you know, especially just seeing all the people in this room right now, you know, that we're being able to, to spotlight more of that, of that, of the artistic side of this space of what it's allowing artists to do, you know, now being able to like create something and sell it to somebody, you know, anywhere else in the world, you know, using like, you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain. And so I think it's, it's amazing. It's a great part about this space and, and particularly wanted to do these spaces on X as well as really to be able to take our time and really get to know individual artists much better, you know, spend more time really understanding more about their story, about their art, about the inspiration, their upbringing, you know, their many talents as well. So yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is you know why we why we do these spaces, and, and I think we, we got to do more. Hopefully, there's even more of them that, that can uh, that can be created so that we can give a voice and a spotlight to uh, to so many talented people in here. But uh, but yeah, thank you so much for uh, coming up, Claudette, and, and and bringing that up. It's it's very true. All right, and I think the next person I had. Well, oh, did we lose them? I had I see Lammy on the stage as well. We greeted him earlier. Yeah. Oh, we did. We did. Okay. I wasn't sure. I, I, I wrote a different name that was very similar, but I think they dropped. So just check it and just to see if we had anybody else. I see we have Charlie. I don't know if Charlie might want to. Meanwhile, I. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Meanwhile, I want to say thank you, Giancarlo and Jennifer, because when I asked you, Giancarlo, that's uh, what I when I came to your space at the first time, I just want to speak and um, and say hi. And you told me that uh, each person has an individual episode for telling story and offer me to tell my story as well and set a time for me and. Uh, I, at first, I thought, that, "Oh my God, oh my God, he wouldn't. He wants to um, offer some uh, price to pay." And after that, led me, and I'm not rich enough. I would love to re be rich. And and thank you, thank you for the giving the opportunity to me. Thank you for uh, giving this valuable um, situation. Thank you so much. No, honestly, Mika, it's our pleasure to have you here. Honestly, the, the honor is ours. And, you know, thank you. Thank you for for creating, you know, such beautiful art for the stuff you do for, you know, for animals that, you know, you, don't, you know, probably don't, don't get paid enough to do it for the teaching you do, you know. So I think, you know, you you are contributing a ton to this world. And, and uh, like I said, I think everybody deserves to have a chance to share their story to tell the to, to talk about their art so um, you know we're very happy to have you here it's our pleasure 
And I see we got another speaker, Mr. NFT. How you doing? Happy Friday. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. So you got a, you know, got a question for us or, uh, for, or for Mika? Uh, yeah, are you all um, <clears throat> artists? We have a mix of artists, collectors <laughs> in the space. Uh, actually, well, Jenny and I are both artists and collectors. Um, Mika, you know, the artist, and we have, you know, Sarkis, we have a few, a few other people here on stage who are also artists as well. So a lot of art, very talented artists also in the space right now. What do I say? I see Carlos, Dreamer, Alexander. Yeah, we got a bunch. <laughs> Drain guys there. How you doing, Caden? Are you an artist? And now they are making uh, uh, NFTs? Yes, yeah. Wow, nice. So the, the artworks, like artworks into NFT mostly? Yeah, correct, yeah. You had a question for me? No, no, yeah, I was just curious if you were an artist as well or... Uh, no, I'm not an artist, but I do like to support other artists and maybe shield some. So if anybody of these artists uh, that are speakers here or anybody that's listening, you can send me a DM. And uh, I can share it on my page. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Noted <laughs> for everyone in the, in the space. You may get a lot of DMs and just saying we got a lot of artists up in the room. Very talented ones. All right. And I see we got uh, who is uh, OXM. How you doing? Happy Friday. You still there? Can you speak? All right, maybe not. So, <laughs> Twitter is definitely raggy today. Yeah. They probably have Androids. That's what happens sometimes. Oh, I see Saeed collected some of his work recently. Looks like it's taking him a while to connect to. And we got somebody else coming on. You know what's weird? I haven't, I've been like, when I go to accept somebody to come up to speak, like, then it doesn't give me the checkbox anymore. I'm like, what's going on? So I have to like click on them and then add them as a speaker. All right, so I'm gonna go to Saeed first. Saeed, you there? Can you speak? Hello. Hello, hello, how are you? Thank you. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? Thanks. I'm great. GM, GM, everyone. GM, GM. Thank you for having me, Mr. Giancarlo and Jennifer. Nice to see you. I'm glad to be here in this space with you. For those who do not know me, this is Said, conceptual alter the designer. I create my art with DirectX coding. DirectX is a graphical environment for coding and creating characters with coding. My aim is to show captivating the beauty and intensity humans' emotions through the art. I shared my art. I try to create character to show a human the feeling. I want to tell you a story behind this piece I share. Oh, sorry, it's sorry. called Dancing uh, with Butterfly. Sorry to interrupt you, but like, because we are going to be wrapping up the space kind of soon. And the, the purpose of this was really was more to, to uh, spotlight Mika today. But it, happy to, if you want to put your artwork, uh, you could put it in the comments because people could maybe go through the comments later. And feel free to you know, add it there and put a description. So you could do that to also get some of the folks that are in here to check it out. But I did want to go now to like the last uh, other speaker we had in case they had a specific question for Mika and then basically wrap it up, okay? So thanks, Aid, for coming up. 
feel free to you know post your art in the comments and definitely we'll check that out later okay All yes right. okay i uh, get it in comments thank you uh, I heard you raggy and don't understand what you say if you uh, talk again. Okay, thank you. All right, and we, I think the other person I saw was Vnorm. Yeah, yeah, what's up, what's up? Doing well, how, how you guys are you? doing? Doing well, hello. I'm good. Hello, hello, Jenny. Hello. So, oh, and wow, like these spotlights are very, very good because I can't believe uh, Mika has been following me. Uh, she's been following me for a long time, and I didn't even like after I just came into this space and I saw that you guys are spotlighting her. I just gave her a follow back now. <laughs> like <laughs> I just went to her object and looked at her at her amazing pieces. Man, they are wonderful. Like these spotlights are really great. Like <laughs> if nobody spotlight, like, I wouldn't have even known like a great artist was following me, and I had to follow back. So. You know, most of the time when people follow you and you check out the people they are following, they are following more people than people that are following them. So you just have to like weigh. But wow, now I don't know she's a great artist. And wow, I'm just like still wowing, like because I'm going through her object right now. All her works are amazing. And I can see she's obsessed with the eyes. There was a time I was obsessed with the eyes because I drew so many eyes with my sketchbook. Uh, man, the eyes are like. You can never, if you get stuck there, then you can never stop drawing them. <laughs> like the eyes, the eyes that she drew, I, I love those ones. And I love the caricatures. Those caricatures, like, they're really great. So, Mika, thumbs up. You're, you're, you're good. You're really good. I love your works. You're amazing. I love follow you back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, thank you so much for, for coming up and, uh, and, and letting her know that. Appreciate that so much. Uh, so I know we do want to wrap up the space. So maybe it was one last thing I was going to ask you, Mika, as well. What Maybe if you could tell us about any upcoming projects or goals you have for your art career, maybe in addition to starting to do some oil painting. I, I hope to see some, some of that soon, at least you know, some experimentation. But uh, yeah, if you want to share anything, maybe we can expect to see you from, from you in the future. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, actually, for before uh, wrapping up the space, I just wanted to uh, sing. If you have time, if you don't have yeah. it, okay. Don't but worry. about uh, upcoming project, uh, I um, I'm going to Mint on Foundation. It's a uh, uh, charcoal art uh, from uh, a real person, is old man, and it's about you know. Um, passing time and how life uh, affects on us and uh, yeah it's something like that so and the thing that i want to sing may i sing or not if you don't have time it's no, okay it's tell fine. me we yeah, don't have yeah, time no, Mika. Really oh, pretty please sing. yes please okay <laughs> Shahzadi Zabin Kaman Nishas Pesipi Mumadas Kuhur Mirav to Altash Bidilam Mizad Negohash Kushki Dilam Rusma Beshe Darya Beshe این دو چشم پرابا روزی که بختم باز بشه بیدار بشه اون که اومد به خوابا شخصانی رویای من شاید توی آن کس که در خواب من آید توی تو از خواب شیرین ناگه پریدم او را ندیدم دیگر کنارم به خدا بر جان رسیده از غص بر لب هر روز و هر شب در انتظارم به خدا یه شب تو خواب وقت سهر 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, amazing people. Just want to tell you, be nice with each other. Just uh, care about humanity. I know life is hard. I know we have hard situation, uh, each of us in our life, but do it in your best way. And you're amazing, Mika. <laughs> I love your energy so much, but beautiful singing. Thank you for singing uh, again for us. Sorry, Teddy, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm just like, oh my gosh, you're over here, just gushing, just blown away. What a woman. You are absolutely exceptional. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I, well, I did see there was one person that had their hands up. I don't know. I'll give you one last thing, right? Uh, OXM, you wanted to say something? Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you for having me here, Giancarlo. Happy Friday. Actually, I have, okay. Uh, my question is for Mika. Uh, I checked your bio. I saw that you have a doctorate in vet and you're still an artist. Uh, I just want to ask a question for myself. Um, into medical school, actually, in my final year of medical school. And I love art. I draw art, actually, but I've not given it time to take it as, let's say, a career or something. I want to know how you get to navigate between doing art and your school when you was in school or even with your current, I think you're still a doctor. So I don't know. I just want to know how you navigate it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi to you. Yeah. You know, uh, during seven years that I was studying doctorate of veterinary medicine, I didn't have time to paint and do art. My parents forced me, as I told uh, the people in space uh, before. Uh, right now, uh, I I particularly, you know, I, ha I have to be in clinics, but I do not like to work in clinics. Uh, it's hard to do that, but uh, it's about the six months that I do not work in the clinics more. But before that, I spend uh, this um, veterinarian stuff uh, just six hours a day at morning. And after that, uh, I um, spend my time on painting. But right now, I just, uh, when someone called me to help uh, their animals, I do it free. And I do not work in clinics, but uh, yes, it's uh, it depends on the management. Yeah, it's hard, but you, it's it's okay. You can do that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will give you a follow so that I will be following up with you, and I really want to also make a decision for myself. Maybe after I'm done with medical school, to choose a part in art because I really love art. Thanks once again. Well, thank you for coming up. Hope you have a great Friday. Uh, again, to our guests, Mika, thank you so much for being here, for singing for us, for just sharing your amazing energy. You, you have just such a wonderful vibe. So it's been absolute pleasure having you here as our guest. Um, I hope, and thank you also to everybody that was here. We got you know so many people in the room. Uh, great to see some new faces uh, in the space. Uh, we do these every Friday, so if you want to check out other spotlights that we do for other artists, we have some, a great lineup for uh, next month uh, so that I'll be sharing next week. So uh, thank you guys all very much for being here. Thanks to everyone that came up uh, to speak as well. I wish you all a wonderful day, wonderful weekend. Much love. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Much Happy love. Friday. Happy Friday. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Happy Friday. Friday. Have a nice day, everyone. Have a nice day. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. You can, I can hear you. You can hear me. You can hear me. Oh, yes. wait, I have an echo for some reason. Why? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Why do I have an echo? It's strange. Okay, I, I don't hear it anymore. You guys can hear me okay? Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Awesome.